Hello and welcome to Lice Train's Video On Demand Library. My name is Matt George, and in this video I will be discussing and demonstrating the installation of Cisco's Security Device Manager, also known as SDM. Now SDM is a Java-based web management suite provided free of charge by Cisco and is factory installed on the integrated services routers, which include the 1800 series, the 2800 series, and the 3800 series. But it's also supported on older routers as well, including the 1700 series, the 2600 XMs, all the way up to the 7200s. Now, I have included a link next to the video here where you can go and download the SDM from the Cisco website for free. All you need is a guest level CCO account, which you can get by simply signing up. Might take you no more than five minutes. And, uh, for this video, I've already downloaded the file that I needed, which was uh, SDM version 2.5, which is the latest as of the creation of this video. And I've extracted the zip file here to a folder on my desktop. Now, there is a few things that you should take into consideration before attempting to install the Cisco Security Device Manager, which is uh, whether or not you have a supported iOS, as well as do you have enough flash available. Uh, you can see here, for the video, I will be using a Cisco 2651XM, and I have 48 megabytes of flash. And the typical image size for a Cisco 2600XM is about 32 megabytes. So this leaves me with uh, 16 megabytes of play. And of course, you do have the option of installing the SDM to a computer where you can be able to execute the SDM uh, Java management suite from the desktop and connect rem remotely to a router and manage it that way. All you have to do is have the router configured to support the, the SDM connections. So let's go ahead and get started here. The first thing we need to do is do some initial configuration on the router here to support the SDM installation. As you can see here, I have a blank slate with this router and I'm gonna go ahead and say no to this initial setup dialog. And of course, it's gonna take a minute here to get the command line because the interfaces are gonna go up and down. There we go. Now we need to first uh, enable the IP web server. So get into global configuration and enable the web services, IP HTTP server. And since this iOS image does support cryptographic uh, features, I'm going to enable the secure server as well. So IP HTTP secure server. And you can see here that we'll automatically generate a 1024-bit RSA key that will be used for the SSL certificate when attempting to make a connection to the secure server via HTTPS. And also it will be used for the SSH connections as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and configure the web services to use local authentication, which is done by IP HTTP, IP HTTP, then local. And of course, you do have the option of setting a timeout policy for the web server, if you like. For this uh, video, I'm gonna go ahead and set one just so you can see it. So it's IP HTTP timeout policy, idle, and you can set the idle timeout, which will be 300 seconds, and the life of any session, which will be 3,600 seconds. And incomplete command, request. And the maximum number of requests allowed for the web services, I'm just gonna set it 10,000, 1,000. It's probably more than, than enough, so. Now that that's finished, we need to go ahead and configure a username for the SDM installation. So uh, SDM does support a default username of Cisco and Cisco, but if you use this, SDM will automatically prompt you to change the username and password when you first log on to SDM. So I'm just gonna use the default of Cisco and Cisco. So username, Cisco, it has to have a level 15 privilege and secret, the super secret password of Cisco. Now we got to get under the virtual terminal lines and do some configuration. Line VTY04. And set the default privilege level of 15. So privilege level 15. And we need to configure the virtual terminal lines to use local authentication. So log in local. This will prompt any attempting connections to the router to use the local database 
which will uh, prompt you for a username and password, and you can use the username and password reconfigured earlier, which is Cisco and Cisco. And if you like, you can configure additional usernames and passwords uh, to suit your needs. So, also we need to configure the the transport to enable telnet and SSH. So transport input telnet SSH. And now we are done with the requirements for SDM's initial installation, but first off I need to go ahead and configure an interface where I can use to install this STM to. So I'm going to go ahead and go to interface fast Ethernet 00, IP address 20.50 with a subnet mast of 24. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the interface up with the no show command. I'm going to go ahead and end the global configuration and write the changes to non-volatile RAM. And now we are ready to start the installation of SDM. So I'm going to go ahead and open the folder here and execute the setup. So we are now prompted at the welcome to the installation wizard for Cisco SDM. Go ahead and click next here. And of course we do have to accept the terms of agreement otherwise it won't let you to it won't allow you to click next. So now of course like I said earlier you do have the option of installing the SDM to a computer where you can use the uh, desktop to launch the SDM management suite and connect to a remote router. Or if you like, you can install the SDM management suite to the router's flash, so that way any computer you attempt to make a connection to the router, the SDM will load via the router. So I'm just going to install it here to the router instead. But you can install it to both if you like. And as you can see here, the installation is prompting us for the IP address and username and password of a account that has a level 15 privilege to install SDM. So the IP address is 172.16.20.50 and the username and password is Cisco and Cisco. Go ahead and click next here. And this may take a few moments so I'm going to pause the video here and I will return after it is completed. All right, now we have the option of doing a typical or custom installation. For this video, I'm just going to select custom and click next here. And you can see we have two options to choose from. We can install the, the full version of SDM, or there is an express version of SDM, which has limited features and has a smaller uh, footprint size where it can fit into uh, less flash memory. For this video, I'm going to go ahead and just install the SDM, but you can install them both if you like, but I'm just going to choose the full version of SDM and click install. I'm going to pause the video here, wait for the installation to complete, and I will return. Now that the SDM installation has completed, I'm going to go ahead and click finish here. And as you can see from the background that the installation has logged onto the router remotely and done some configuration. This is because the installation copied the the files required for SDM to the router's flash. And you can verify this by doing the directory flash command. And you can see that the files that I'm highlighting here are part of Cisco's security device manager. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.